Hey everybody, I am really excited today to talk about today's topic, which is breastfeeding aversions when breastfeeding sucks, when it's hard and horrible because we often hear that it's supposed to be this really happy, um, glowy bonding experience with you and your baby and it's not always a happy experience. So I am going to actually um, jump on with a friend and um, talk about I think it's a topic that we just don't talk about enough and we really need to be discussing that it's not always all sunshine and rainbows. Hello! How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Oh my gosh, it's so good to see you again. So I'm going to give a little background. I'm actually teaching at a professional conference um, this coming year in the spring about breastfeeding aversions, when breastfeeding sucks when it's not rainbows and moonbeams and kittens. And so my friend here, Caitlin, um, graciously agreed to come and talk to me to let me interview her about her breastfeeding aversion. And it was so powerful and so impactful to me as a lactation consultant that I wanted her to come share her journey and experience with everyone because I do feel like we are not talking about this and it's much more common um, than we are led to believe. So I'm going to turn it over to you and I would love for you to just tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about your journey. Um, first of all, thank you for having me. I feel like such a nobody talking about this, but I know it just happens to just everyday neighbor mom. So um, I guess I'm here to just give a voice to us. Um, so I I am a first time mom of an 18 month old. I breastfed for 13 months. And typically, if you were to ask me about my breastfeeding journey, that's all I would say. I really yeah. wouldn't say more to it than that. Um, but you gave me the opportunity, the platform, the audience to hear about the aversion side of breastfeeding. And I think I wanted to share how. Um, like you can push through it and it doesn't have to be a death sentence for your bre breastfeeding journey unless mm -hmm. you do that. Um, so first of all, I, I did a little bit of research myself because the only reason I knew I had an aversion is because I was feeling these feelings mm -hmm. and um, I was Googling negative feelings during a letdown. Is, is, is there anyone else out there? I had gotten past the um, contractions at the beginning of mm -hmm. breastfeeding. I had gotten through a um, couple bouts of mastitis. I My son never had any tie issues. Like it was just a really seamless thing for us. So for me to have these negative feelings, I, I was like, there's got to be something I can do. I I had the silverettes. I had the balms. I had the, the nice comfy chair. I had the breastfeeding shirts. I had mm -hmm. You know, I set myself up for success and I still had this aversion. So I Google this and come to find out there's this thing called DEMER, mm -hmm. dysphoric milk ejection reflex. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, that's, that's and right. Yeah. A severe intensity of symptoms includes all the ones that I felt. So I couldn't find a symptom listed under DEMER that I did not feel. So I feel that I was in a severe extreme case of DEMER. Um, hopelessness, anxiety, anger, paranoia, mm -hmm. hollowness, suicidal ideation. Um, it was it was very extreme for me. So if I could just first back up and talk about the kind of milk supply that I had. Um, I've always had um, an oversupply. Um, I had built up a freezer stash um, and by accident, I just had put on the haka or put on the ladybug and was catching the letdown. Um, so if I am trying to lay the groundwork for, I had very intense, strong letdowns. Um, and I was told by lactation consultants that it would lessen the longer I breastfed. And so I think yeah. that encouraged me to keep going. The problem is I kept going and it never went away. It did not lessen. I The tingly power that you feel come toward your nipples during breastfeeding, it, it never stopped for me. It never lessened all the way through 13 months. Um, I felt an extreme letdown. Um, 
Now the cool, I guess the, the positive side for Deemer for me, it was a 30 second to like a minute and a half sort of thing for me. It was a very um, short negative aversion experience, but if I could try to explain a metaphor of what Deemer was for me, like you feel your body getting ready to have a letdown. Um, you just can feel the milk charging through um, your breast and um, I took, I journaled about this, um, because it was a way to cope. Um, and I, I talked about, um, I felt, um, swept up, um, by a negative rush. It, it felt intense. Um, it was prickly, like I said, but, um, it was like a tsunami wave, but in the middle of the night. So Deemer for me was, was like the light of having a child, the light of your firstborn, the light of having a family, the light of being a mom, the light of my dreams always been a mom. The light of that was turned off mm -hmm. and it was a, the, the let down. So the, the push, the prickly feeling was the wave gathering up and it would just crush mm -hmm. over me. And I felt like in that, that crushing instance, Deemer was gathering up anything that was valuable to me my 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 baby my husband any material things my cats um just anything that was of value to me and and gathered it all up and rushed away with it and that was the feeling of hollowness that was the feeling of hopelessness um, paranoia um feeling like the entire time of deemer i'm running after it i'm trying to catch it um and bring it back um so and then and as soon as I realized what was happening, it was gone. And then I finished the feed, um, but that was every single time. And um, so that that was Deemer to me. It was, it was, it was mm -hmm. almost like God's wrath. Um, now, would you experience that? We know that you can have anywhere from four to nine letdowns in a breastfeeding session, usually the first and sometimes the second are the strongest. Would you feel that Deemer with every single letdown in the feeding or just at the beginning of the first initial feeding, the first initial letdown? Like in a single yeah. session, I would say it was the first one was the longest bout of Deemer, like the, the biggest tsunami wave for me. Um, and then I would maybe have a, a few more, but it's like the tide, the storms got less and less. Um, but at the same time, even though it might only happen one time in a session really strong, it happened every session. So we all know you can breastfeed up to 12 times a day. Yeah. So that 12 tsunamis a day, is a, that's a lot of aversion for 13, yeah. 13 months straight. It's, it's a lot. So what did you find? You kind of alluded to that a little bit of strategies that you use. So I know I'm sure that there is somebody out there, drop it in the comments um, if you've experienced this too, but what was it that helped you? You kind of talked about that a little bit, but what would you advice would you give to other people who are experiencing this, who are like, oh my gosh, somebody else experiences this. Uh, I, 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 see, I feel seen and heard. What, would you, what recommendation would you give to them? So, I am the oldest of four. My dad was a Marine. Um, I was a school teacher for seven years. I have always valued and found safety and security in structure mm -hmm. and um, schedules and discipline, self-discipline. And so as soon as we got out of the feeding on, on demand, mm -hmm. I immediately turned this breastfeeding journey into um i i just i had it spaced out and it's like i was doing 10 feedings a day and i was doing eight for a couple months and then it was eight feedings a day a couple months and then it was six and then it was four and then for the last few months it was four or three but that that structure and discipline was very important to me knowing when the tsunamis were going to come knowing when the aversions were going to come even though i knew i couldn't stop them like i listed at the beginning of all this i gathered all the materials i was very i felt really knowledgeable on breastfeeding um at least just from personal exposure to pe to moms who have or the TikTok research i did or as much research as you could do without having done it yourself so take all of that and all the different things that i had bought to make myself and my son the most comfortable during breastfeeding take all of that 
couldn't stop it from coming. So accepting that it was going to, ha- that aversion was going to happen, accept, accepting, and then just, just knowing when it was going to come and how often. So it's the, it was the structure and the acceptance that I, I feel like were the most um, important to me being able to push through and then being able to breastfeed as long as my son wanted to, um, that I guess I, I guess I'm just so proud that I found a way to not let the aversion take over my, my journey and take it from me, like to, to take, to, to cause Deemer and then also to take my journey, my breastfeeding journey from me. I, I just, I felt like there was something I could do to dictate how controlling the aversion was. Yeah. Now, now in that course of that 13 months, did you ever use a breast pump? Did you experience the same thing with a pump? So I took, I got, a, I know you put posts out there about um, just this like weird trend of like being so proud to have a freezer stash and just kind of a, the silliness and some of that. And what I feel like is also a silliness about breastfeeding is this, I, I was so proud to be an exclusive breastfeeder. And so I, it wasn't just having a stash. It was that I never used my pump and I got my pump through insurance. I had it before my son was even here, but there was some pride that I had about not breaking it out, subsequently causing an oversupplier to get mastitis or to get uh, clogged ducts or just cause a plethora of other problems because of my pride. Um, But I broke out my pump finally, I think it was around the six or the seven month mark. Mm -hmm. And I think with the pump, I usually would have one big letdown. I never pumped for very long. Mm -hmm. Um, So I would usually just get it with that first um, letdown. I probably only pumped a couple more minutes longer, not enough to have another letdown. Gotcha. And then, it. but you did. So, exp- did you experience that the same? Was it the same wave sensation? What did it feel smaller or bigger, or was it equivalent for you? I don't think it was as strong. The tsunami wave was not as big and and loud and mm-hmm. and wrath like. Um, but I think that's because a flange is only such a perfect fit compared to your baby's mouth. And so I, I, that even though I did all the measuring, I felt like I had flanges that fit really well. Nothing, nothing could, could empty me as quick as well as my, my son, my child. And so, no, it wasn't as intense. So I actually do think that that could be a potential another solution that if the aversion was less loud with the pump, that maybe that that could be a way to still provide breast milk for your baby while also like turning down the aversion. Yeah. Cause that, that's kind of the experience I'm hearing. I've been interviewing people. I've been talking about this, um, having feedback and responses. And it's interesting because some people experience it with both baby and pump. There's no difference. It's a similar sensation. I've had some people that had no issue to the baby, but a severe aversion, the deemer to the pump, or even an aversion to the pump. And then I've had it where they've had an aversion to the baby, but because they can control the pump, they had no aversion to pumping and they actually switched to exclusive pumping. So it's been really interesting to really hear the variety of experiences that it's not one size fits all, that if you have deemer, the dysphoric milk ejection reflex, um, that there can be different ways that it's experienced that it really is not just a, Oh, you have this, so you have Deemer, so you're going to experience it like this, that it's like, Oh no, you can experience it all of these different ways. And we would still categorize it as that same Mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. In my research, I even saw how there were moms of multiples who really didn't experience it with their first couple, but then like by the third or something, then all of a sudden they had this aversion that they didn't have at the beginning. I'm I'm a little troubled by that, having had such a severe yeah. aversion with my first. Um, but again, there's there's nothing I could do about it. So it's acceptance. Yeah. It's it deemer either joins the breastfeeding conversation for me again or it doesn't. Maybe it's less. Maybe it's more. Um, but it it doesn't last. And so like I guess now my son being 18 months old, we stopped five months ago. I something that you know caused me to feel emotion and prepping for this conversation with you was if I could you know have an, one more breastfeeding session with him mm-hmm. and have Deemer the entire time have the inversion the entire time I would absolutely do that um, to be able to provide for my baby and nourish him in that way one more time so the aversion 
is severe is intense, but it wasn't more than my, my desire to provide for him in that way. Yeah, that's phenomenal. And that I really do think is where lactation consultants need to continue to ask, what is your goal? Mm. Is this sustainable? Is this too much? Because there are families that are like, that have that awareness like you, right? Of, you know what? I can, I have strategies. I have coping tools. I know what it is. I know I'm not alone. I know this isn't something that um, is commonly talked about, but hey, mm -hmm. it's there. And now mm -hmm. that I have a name to it, I can keep going. And that, yes, there will be other families where it's like, mm, this is not sustainable. It's overwhelming. It's impacting mental health. And there will be those cases where we as lactation consultants that need to support and say, well, maybe it is better for you to be able to wean, mm. to not have it impact you in that way. So I, that's again, why I'm so thankful for you coming on and talking about this to really bring light that not every breastfeeding experience it is rainbows and moonbeams and hugs and snuggles and like this ah, Madonna with her baby, you know, bonding moment that yes, you can really want to breastfeed and still be having these aversions that mm. make it this like uh, clash. Mm between your expectation of what you think it's going to be and what you see on social media and what it actually ends up being. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I agree yeah. with you. Well, thank you so much for coming on and being so vulnerable with us and sharing your experience. I'm really hopeful that as moms like you who are willing to come out and talk about this and are open and vulnerable, it will really help other people out there struggling with the same thing to know that they're not alone. Um, that other people experience this too, and that there is support and strategies and coping mm -hmm. mechanisms. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. And ever, to everybody out there, thank you for watching and listening. And if you need additional support, don't hesitate to reach out to me, lactation at gmail.com um, through social media. You can always send me a message and we'll get you the best resources and strategies possible. All right. Thanks everybody.